the locos hadn't been over this bridge and I think they uh, feared that it wasn't uh, safe uh, and we were standing, we went up there to uh, repair this bridge. So along one day came the loco at snail's pace and it went onto the bridge and it started, the pile started to, to uh, go down and it quickly reversed. We had to pull pull up all those um, those piles on the bridge, lay sleepers underneath them, concrete them in, jack the, jack the bridge up first and then uh, concrete them in. By then, the, um, the, um, I, I, one day I saw a brass band go up and I thought, oh, well, I think the, uh, the line was finished and it was. Uh -huh. Now our, our task there was to uh, go out to a rocky ridge, blow it, uh, drill it, blow it up and uh, break it all up into small pieces uh, and they had a, a, a little spur rail out to it. And uh, uh, there, the, well, the work, uh, when the line was finished, the work became quite easy. We, uh, but uh, two or three little uh, incidents happened there. One was uh, Hiramatsu Sojo, the uh, camp commandant, had uh, disputed with, uh, had a dispute with Captain Hinder. And he demoted him to, uh, to sergeant and uh, made Frank Baker, the, uh, the sergeant, made him a captain. So this went on for a couple of weeks. Uh, uh, Frank Baker, um, we all went, we went to the doctor just the same, but Frank ba Baker was the authority and he uh, put them all into the kitchen. Uh, anyway, uh, this went on for about a fortnight and uh, Hiramatsu had a, something wrong with his finger. He wanted uh, Captain Hinder to, uh, to uh, operate on it. And he said, uh, sergeants aren't allowed to operate, go to Captain Baker. So uh, the, the ro uh, roles were reversed twice. Yes. So from there, um, the line was finished, and uh, we were taken back down to Tempe. Yeah. Now Tempe. Did you, did you march back? Or no, no, no. We were to, by train. Now, yes. The train was, um, and I think it was a loco we went on as well. Yeah. Uh, got down to Camp um, Tempe again. Now uh, Tempe was the, uh, the best camp that I was ever in in Thailand. Uh, it had a rocky uh, bluff behind the camp. Uh, and there were two streams ran out of it. One uh, it was about six feet up the wall. It was a hole about six or eight inches in diameter, out of which flowed pure, clean, cool water that didn't have to be boiled. And on the other side of the camp, uh, uh, a similar thing. And I never ever had the opportunity to see where it issued forth. But we were told that that water uh, fell on the Himalayas ten thousand years ago and flowed underground. Now in Thailand. Uh, water will just emerge from under a rock mm -hmm. uh, and this is what uh, had happened here. Now uh, the cookhouse was on the other side and they'd, uh, uh, the cooks had uh, got bamboo, taken the nodes out of it and they, uh, they had running water into their kitchen. Right, uh, now that, that's interesting that, that because uh, some people claim that the only reticulated water was in Hintock Mountain Camp but obviously in this camp they oh, had in, it as in, well. In, in, um, in, in Camp Tampa because they yeah. were fresh water that didn't need boiling, yes, yes. Uh, 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 running water into the kitchen mm. and also it was a, um, a wooden water station for the trains. Now in Thailand there's no coal so the trains, uh, the locos had to be fueled by wood. Uh, now when we got back from Rin Tinder there the task was to cut a million pieces of Thai wire. Mm. Now T-H-A-I uh, that is not Thai, <laughs> Thai wire, it's the bark of a tree uh, they were building a camp at Tamawang for the withdrawing of the, of mm. the camps uh, and these, uh, they, they put up a, a bamboo frame, steep these, um, the, these uh, it's the bark of a tree, I think mm. it might be the, um, oh, what's that very light wood again? Uh, Kapok? No, um, goes from South America. Uh, anyhow, mm. uh, it's the bark of the tree and you, you, you cut the tree down and just strip these bark Mark, it, it looks like uh, lace. Mm. Uh, you steep it in water, tie the bamboo structure together with it, and when it dries, it, it, uh, shrinks. it shrinks and mm. holds the, the building together. Mm. Uh, but uh, the British were there in the camp, and uh, they um, were manning a. Uh, they uh, it was a it was a uh, wooden mortar station. They had a little um, tank with a petrol motor where they pumped the water up from this stream, and that uh, was the water for the locos. The, um, uh, there were ten men detailed off to uh, um, uh, wood up the trains and I was one of them uh, and we, uh, the, the, the task was 
uh, to uh, wood up the trains. Uh, while we were there, I suppose we were there for only about six weeks. At least four times uh, the train went through, and on the back open uh, open tray were w women. Mm. Uh, and of course, as soon as they got there, they liked the men, they wanted to bend you, bend you, bend you, bend you, and we all had to move over the other side and wood up the train while they used our banjo. Uh, so uh, then we were moved back down to Tamwang. When we got to Tamwang, uh, we, there were some of us still in pretty good order, and they called us the good looking boys because we weren't, not because we were handsome, but uh, because we had a bit of condition on us. So they took us back down to Singapore put us on a burnt out rusty old ship and it took us 70 days uh, to go to Japan. Right. And where did you land when you arrived in Japan? Uh, we, uh, we arrived at Moji. Moji is the, uh, the port, the, the northernmost port on the island of Kyushu. Uh, now it's, uh, they've changed the name to, to uh, Kita Kyushu now, that is north, north uh, Kyushu. But it was M-O-J-I, Moji. From there we uh, were put on a, uh, we didn't know it, but it was a coal mining camp we were going to. The uh, coal barges had been over, unloaded their coal, and we were put into the, uh, the coal barge and taken across the, uh, the strait of um, Shimonosaki to uh, Ohama Daikubon Kaishu, uh, uh, Ohama Number 9 Prisoner of War Camp. And uh, it was a coal mining uh, camp. The coal was two kilometres out underneath the sea. And, uh, but uh, I, uh, um, did I say I'd been a baker all my life? And yes. uh, Reg Newton uh, also insisted that 50% uh, of the, there were about 200 Brits there. And uh, uh, again, uh, he insisted that we have 50% uh, of the good jobs. And he called for a baker, and I was the only one that stepped out, and I got the best camp job in camp. Now, I really think that had I been sent down that mine, I, I wouldn't have been here today. Um, so Newton was with you at, at this camp? At, uh, Newton was my uh, uh, commanding right, officer all the way all the way along except yeah. that two or three weeks before yeah. he came into PD. And did you have an Australian doctor in that camp or? Uh, no we had, uh, uh, there were two doctors in that camp. Yeah. One was an American and one was a Dutchman. Uh, the American's name was Bill Plugman. The uh, Dutchman was Rene, uh, uh, almost the same name. Uh, uh, oh. mm. no, I can't think of his name, but Bill, mm. Bill Plugman was the... Uh, and how would you spell Plugman, just as a... Uh, uh, P-L-O-E-G-M-A-N. Right. Uh, now, I'm not too sure whether which of them was Plugman. The other one was uh, uh, almost the same spelling. Thank you. Um, Yeah. We've got uh, 25 minutes. Oh, mm. right. Uh, so I became the camp baker, and uh, the uh, the uh, I was the second baker. The first baker was uh, Tug Wilson. If you're in the British Army and your name is Wilson, you get Tug as your nickname. And I never knew him by anything else but Tug. Uh, he always called me Charlie Boy. And he said, Charlie Boy, he said, this is the best job in camp. And if, uh, if we had to bake a little loaf, a bit bigger than a hamburger, for 400 men. Uh, if we finished our work, uh, have, a, have a, a bucket of water and a scrub brush handy, and if you see one of a, a guard or a Japanese officer, or even one of our own officers, 